Welcome to this SP3 video. In this video, we're going to carry on from the series and we're going to add an LED strip. Now, the cool thing that you can do with CleanFly is actually connect LED strips around your craft and actually have the control board change their color depending on various states and activities that's actually going on. So you can have the LED show arm status, have them flashing like indicators on a car to indicate which control it's going in, um, show battery status, all kinds of cool things. So in this video, we're going to connect it up to our Seriously Pro F3 flight controller. You'll notice the eagle eye of view that we are shooting this slightly out of sequence. The reason being is I'm waiting for my frame to arrive so we can actually install this and get this flying. But while I'm waiting for the frame to arrive, we can actually do this video in the interim. So this is fifth in the series, but you'll notice that the board looks like it did at the end of the first video, and that's why. So first of all, let's talk about these LEDs and what you actually need to get hold of for it to all work. So the LED interface changed dramatically uh, back in version 1.7.1 of Clean Flight. So we're on 1.9 as I'm recording this, although by the time you're watching this, we'll at least be 1.10 or maybe a little bit further. Now 1.9 was the first version of Clean Flight that supports the SP3 flight controller that we're looking at in the series, so you'll get this interface. It needs to be an LED strip that has individually addressable LEDs. So that means that you want an WS2812, I believe WS2811 works too. If I show you the back of this LED strip, there we go. You can hopefully read it said WS2812 and this is a eight LED strip, but you can get them in lots of different size and shapes. So you can get them as individual, banks of three, um, and the flight controller will run up to 32 LEDs in sequence. So you'll notice on the back, if you go back to the bench, that you actually have ground, digital in on one end, and digital out on the other, four to seven volts DC. And the way it works is that what you actually do is daisy chain them together. So the first one would actually connect to the flight controller, then the second one would connect to the first one, and so on and so on, until you've got all the LEDs on the craft that you want. The way we actually connect it up to the flight controller is pretty straightforward. There is a pin that's dedicated to the LEDs on IO1. So underneath where we connected it, if you have a PPM receiver, or underneath the initial connections for elevator, aileron, and auxiliary one, if you're using PWM, pin seven is for LEDs. If you want to read more about LEDs, then do visit the ledstrip.md link that I've got at the bottom of each of these screens. They give you all the information and additional detail. So what we'll do is we'll actually connect our LED strip up like this. Just simply, we'll connect the ground to the ground out of IL1, because luckily we have a ground and plus five volts there on IL1 already. So we're going to use those, and then we're going to plug in the digital in of my WS2812 LED strip to pin seven. And once we've done that, then we're ready. So let me do that very quickly, come back and show you what that looks like, and then we'll jump into clean flight and we'll start configuring things. So here we are with it connected up, pretty straightforward stuff. So we have our plus and uh, ground wires coming out of IO1, going into the plus five volts and the ground of the LED strip, and then that nice orange wire, which is the digital in, is going into pin seven on the controller. So that's the hard stuff done in terms of the physical connection. So really straightforward and very easy on the SP3. What we'll do now is we'll fire up clean flight, we'll connect to it, we need to turn the LED function on, and then we need to configure what we want these LEDs to do, and also where they are positioned on the frame. So, netbook time. So here we are in clean flight, we haven't connected the board just yet, so if I just do a quick overview of what we're actually looking at on the table, and we'll put this as an insert as we're going through and doing the configuration, here we have our Seriously Pro F3, we have the LEDs connected, I've done it this way because the LED that's first by digital in is LED 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, then the next one that you would connect to this side of the board would be addressed as LED 9 etc. 
this way around just to keep consistency with the way I'm about to set it up with the interface. Hopefully it'll make more sense. So I'm going to actually boot the board by applying power to it via the receiver. So I'll just plug that in and it can boot up. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'll plug the board into the computer. So there's the LED coming in. And here we are connecting. Now there are two things in here that we actually need to do in order to get the LEDs to work. The first is we need to go into configuration and we need to zoom down to the bottom and then say we want the LED strip and then we click save and reboot and what we should see when it reboots is we get some lights. There we are, we have lots of flashing lights and things, that's all come on. It's overdriving the camera because these LEDs are really bright, but we have green, flashing red, we have green, couple of blues and green. Now the reason we're seeing that, if I just jump into the LED strip part, this is what we're seeing. So this is a default configuration. And the way to think about this is this layout is kind of showing where all the LEDs actually are physically put onto the craft. So I'm just going to clear all and then I'm going to write and save that. So there we are, we've um, set it up. So now we know the LEDs are all working, they're all white. We can actually now configure them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down and say wire ordering mode. We're going to tell the board where the LEDs actually are. So here's my eight LEDs. I'm actually going to be mounting them right at the very front of the craft. If I was mounting them at the rear of the craft, I'd draw them in here. Or if I was going to mount them uh, to the right or left, I'd put them either side. So this is kind of a physical top-down view of where the LEDs actually are. Now, if you have LEDs that come in little bunches, you can put them all over the place. I have my LEDs, my eight LEDs in one long strip, so I'm a bit stuck. So what I'm going to do is configure my two outside LEDs. Actually, I'm going to keep them as white. So they're going to be color white, seven color white. Oops, that one, there we go. Okay, I'm going to have uh, this as something called an indicator. So it will indicate when I'm going left and right. We'll do that for the same as six, so it's nice and similar. There we go. We'll then say that two can be another color. We'll have them as that nice uh, blue. And I'll do the same this side as well. Nice blue color. And then finally, the two in the middle will actually make them as arm state. Oops, let's make that other one blue again. There we go. Right, so hopefully now there's all my LEDs configured. Let me just clear number eight. I don't want to have that there. Okay, so we're going to save that. And there they are on the craft. So we have, you can't quite see it here because it's kind of overdriving slightly, but we have the two white ones on the outside, two green ones in the middle, and two blue outside. And the green ones are there to show the arm condition. So if I actually turn on my radio, and connect up to the board. As I move my um, aileron left and right, you'll see that the indicators flash. And because the board knows where LEDs one and six are, which side, and this is why it's important to kind of keep the logical and physical setup the same, you can see as I turn my aileron left, I get the flashing left LED, aileron right, I have my white in the middle. If I arm the board, then the middle's go blue, if I disarm they go back to green. So that's what they're doing. So that's how you do it. If you find that the first time that um, the LEDs aren't coming on and working, then all you need to do is just go into the command line interface and then back out into one of the other tabs, back to the LED strip tab, and that will force a reboot and you will have it set up. So that's how you set up and configure LED strips on an SP3. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find.
Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and happy flying.